As African Americans nationwide continue to build collective wealth and knowledge about enhancing the black experience in these United States, HBCU graduates have come together for a really innovative resource connecting folks in a very, very diverse and exploding industry. And we are honored to have them with us tonight. Uh, the co-founders of HBCU Real Estate, Ms. Kristen Turner, Brother Marcus King, and Brother William Foster. And I'm sorry, Sister Kristen Turner as well. I, I, appre I appreciate all of you so much for coming on. This is something that's just launched. We're just seeing this on social media. People are signing up for it. Um, and it really is an ambitious project, but it's something that's so necessary because of what we've seen, obviously, in the mainstream marketplace with things like this. And why we want to expose black businesses to nation, national and regional opportunities. So first, congratulations to to all of you. Uh, Will, I will start with you um, from a, from a from a grassroots perspective, let, let's start with the end first. What do you hope that HBCU real estate and its nuts and bolts will do in terms of connecting the HBCU community to working opportunities and partnership opportunities and development opportunities? Uh, thank you again, Jared, for having us. Um, I think at the most fundamental level, this is once again, trying to find ways for us to circulate the, you know, intellectual capital, the economic capital of our community. Uh, and really, there's no bigger asset um, that, that tends to revolve around than real estate. Um, and so I think our primary hope is give more opportunities for business to HBC real estate providers, um, give the HBCU community some way to, you know, other ways to support their uh, fellow HBCUs. Um, and, and like I said, continue to push towards institutionalizing and keeping that dollar within our community. Kristen, you you guys are all from various HBCUs. Will from Prairie View in Virginia State, Marcus from Prairie View, you from Spelman and Southern. How did you guys get together and conceptualize this this framework? Um, and how long did it take to get to a place where you thought it was ready for exposure to the HBCU community? Um, well, it's been William's idea for a while. Um, it's <laughs> It kind of came together, I guess, once you realize everything that he needed <laughs> um, to get done, because he had reached out to me first to just kind of build it um, on a contractual basis. And then I think maybe it hit him um, how much <laughs> it would be um, to do it that way. Uh, but as far as, you know, how we all came together, I think it's just a mutual respect and a, and a trust really through, honestly, William. Um, from when I first kind of saw him on social media, I always knew he was extremely intelligent and things like that. Um, so it's just really about trusting, I guess, the the leader and, and, and really their connections with it. But yeah, everyone's been pretty solid on knowing like what they bring to it, respecting each other's individual talents um, and really just letting everyone do what they need to do. Um, as far as getting it done, we've been pretty organized. <laughs> um, have had timelines, 30 day goals, 60 day goals, 90 day goals, um, and staying on track. So, so far it's been okay, but we're very, very early and we all know how entrepreneurship works. Um, but so far, not bad. Um, we've, yeah, I've been respecting each other. Everyone's been pretty much handling their business. So yeah, <laughs> <We're pretty laughs> on that front. <laughs> Marcus, it, it, it would seem obvious enough in the name itself, it's it's real estate. And we know that there have been successful HBCU graduates in that particular field for, for generations. Um, but it's more than that. It's 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 resources that support real estate. It's it's information uh to try to connect folks to uh details about acquisitions and, and learning more about the industry. What was that intentional or is that something from the start, or was it something that you, as you guys were building it, you determined hey, this is something we got to add in here. Hey, this is something that may be beneficial to the community. Hey, this is something that will help folks who are novices and folks who are advanced in the field. Yeah, no, I, I think it was very intentional. Uh, I think um, it was kind of the idea from the beginning. And so, of course, as we continue to, to grow this, you know, it'll morph and, and kind of come into a, a element of its own um, as we start to see things that, you know, make sense or see opportunities in one specific area. Uh, of course, you know, as mentioned, entrepreneurship is a journey. And so we'll tweak along the way. But I think uh, definitely uh, 
what we wanted to do or what we wanted to do and are looking to do is connect uh, all our providers, all our consumers. Uh, essentially, there's only so many different ways that, that we can buy black or there's so many apparent ways that we can buy black. Um, but when it comes to uh, larger expenses, especially being a home, for example, it's one of the largest purchases anybody will make. Uh, I think it's very important that we we all seek out and be very intentional about how we're going about spending those dollars. You and I guess we're all family. We can keep it frank. You know, usually um, in starting a black business, one of your primary concerns is how do I get my people to value my product, especially if there are uh, comparable services or products in in a mainstream marketplace what were the conversations among you three like to to say this is how we're going to get people engaged and loyal to a very new brand and a very new concept as for anybody to answer i'm gonna let marcus because marcus is the <laughs> marcus handles the marketing <laughs> he, he, he's got his pulse on that thing in a, in a way that i i listen so, Marcus, mm -hmm. that's all you, man. <laughs> so, sure. Uh, so, uh, my background is in engineering. Um, mm -hmm. And so, I, I tend to think of things uh, in a system or in a process. And the beauty about, you know, today, 2021, is uh, technology, internet, right? Uh, just like, you know, we're on uh, StreamYard now having this interview with you. Um, the interview, I'm sorry, the internet gives us you know, the capability to uh, target and uh, put out messages and, and build trust, um, but essentially get in front of the people um, who would be prime uh, consumers uh, or providers uh, for HBCU real estate. And, uh, you know, after repetition and seeing something so many times, uh, you know, you kind of start to build trust uh, with it. It's like, you know, okay, I, and sometimes you even look at a commercial, you may see a commercial 20 or 30 times before you finally look up and, and pay attention to it. And then it clicks like, oh, this is what this is about. And you can kind of put the pieces together. And so I, I think for us, it's really going to be about leveraging uh, the Internet, leveraging social media, leveraging our, our networks. And of uh, yeah, essentially, yeah, just leveraging our, our networks and leveraging the Internet. It's an interesting point about networks because all three of you are from HBCUs that have really, really huge alumni buy-in to the institution. Do you think that that's, I would ask it two ways, Kristen, and first with you because you're affiliated with two of the biggest. Hmm. Um, do you think that that's something, number one, that the school will help to facilitate for you, whether that be Southern or Spelman? And number two, do you think that the geography about where you've been in terms of your HBCUs will Will help to identify or, or captivate people in those areas atlanta baton rouge are, are growing places in terms of of, of real estate and, and black serve black owned services do you think those two things can kind of combine to work well in the early stages for hbc real estate yeah um one thing i love about my people is we believe in word of mouth um someone tries it first they like it they definitely tell mama daddy auntie uncle whoever um and what i will say is that kind of different than PWIs. Um, a lot of, there's a lot of generational history with HBCUs, um, especially it's your, what I've learned, you're either like the first one to go or you're like me and you're like third generation there. Um, so with that, I think it's just about, you know, us reaching back to who we, who we know and, and being pretty freaking creative, but um, but yeah, the beautiful thing is that, you know, like, like William said, HBCUs really are a family um, and you get one good connection, one good word of mouth, someone who really believes in you. All you need is one good alumni announcement <laughs> um, in an email and you're kind of like shot through the glass um, when it comes to that community. So I think it really is just about reaching out to individual um networks but of course going right to friends you know um we're millennials i know plenty of real estate agents uh, who i went to school with uh, who also went to hbcus um and have been on social media with them since what 
social media began. So there um, are a lot of really deep um, connections, even with people that you don't know, um, especially with social media. There's a lot of people who watch you who don't tell you. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of become fans of you without even telling you um, and you do something kind of cool and they're like hey I've actually been watching you for like six months and you're like appreciate you um, <laughs> and so there is that thing as well it kind of connects into what Marcus says we know people are um, you know are watching we know our networks are strong it's just about finding that one little in um, no matter how that happens with how with each of us but yeah, people watch. Um, families are families, and we just got to get one person to trust us, and for them to have a big mouth. And there you go. <laughs> well, th- did you in in setting up this idea and and moving forward with establishing it for you? How much was the current economic environment a factor? Um, was it to specifically drive black business in a really tough and lean economic time? Um, knowing that businesses are, 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 are facing, um, restrictions because of, because of COVID, um, guidelines and restrictions. Is this something where you're saying you're, you're, you're launching this now and you're revealing it now because we need it right now. We really need it now. I wish I could say I was that smart, Jared. Um, <laughs> no, I, I can't. I, I wish that was true. I, I think what this idea had been sitting with me, Kristen and Marcus both know this. this has been sitting with me for a couple of years and I had approached Kristen about doing it on a contractual basis. But I also said, and I don't remember, it was some time ago, I was like, I want to do something with both of them. And I didn't know what it was going to be. I was like, but I like both of them. I love them. I interviewed Marcus back in 2015 for HBCU Money. Um, I've been following Kristen for, I don't know how long I love the way she moved in terms of her own businesses. And so it really was me also saying to myself, I'm not doing any more solo projects. Um, (laughs) you know, I just, I'm a multipreneur, so I I got my hands in a few things like both of them. And so it really became a project of when I'm finding the right people and I know it's the right situation, that's when I'll do this. And, you know, I sent them to tweet like, hey, we need to talk. I don't, you know, I just want to put it in front of y'all. If they think it has legs, then, you know, and that's why we're here. Um, they both mm-hmm. understood the vision and we all, you know, we just clicked. Um, and so, yeah, no, I wish it was where I was like, oh, this is the time. It, it was them, you know, it was me mm-hmm. finding them and, and coming to that point where it was like me realizing I don't want to do anything else by myself in business. <laughs> and so, you know, when you got, when you have a great team, you know, it's a lot easier to do great things. So uh, that, that's really, you know, but it, but I also would say it is coming around at an optimal time for uh, black businesses and especially HBCU businesses specifically, because, you know, we need to be able to have real estate providers that are from HBCUs who are able to get leads. You know, one of the things in real estate is it's really hard to find customers, um, especially if you're a real estate agent or you're a mortgage provider. You know, and so if you went to an HBCU, why wouldn't you want to use somebody who went to an HBCU if you can find somebody? Um, and obviously, you know, and so I think for me, this was something that just inevitably needed to happen. Um, and it just so happened that this is the time it did. For all three of you, what what are your your um I guess definitions of growth? If we're looking six months away or a year away, how will you know, hey, this thing is really growing and people are embracing it? Is it the amount of folks who are participating on the website? Is it the amount of confirmed leads or or folks who have gotten business and feedback that way? Or, or is there some other metric that you guys look at and say, This is this is a project that that's really doing what it's supposed to do? Can I? start absolutely so, okay i think for me it's um for me it's gonna feel like a success when that first house gets sold from a real estate agent or a broker from hbcu real estate and also someone who was a consumer as well um i think that's when we're really going to kind of know that it is working um, because people can sign up all day, you know what I mean, um, whether or not they're a service provider or a consumer, but they have to trust us in order to trust each other. Um, and money is one of the biggest trust factors. So once people actually start spending real deal money with each other and it does come 
from both sides. I think that's for me personally when I'm going to be like, okay, we're we're really doing this, um, and it's working for both sides, both parties, um, and just yeah, I'm trying to find that balance of, you know, continually bringing in leads, but of course our name being spread across the actual real estate industry. Um, once again, someone actually makes money <laughs> using our platform. So uh, yeah, in my head, that's when it's going to be successful when someone makes money from us. Mm-hmm. I, I, lo- I love that. Uh, I think this thing really hit, hit the nail on the head with that one. But um, before we get there, though, we, we just have to get people to sign up. Um, so we have to have consumers and providers in place who are uh, looking or and willing to buy into this uh, this this buy black real estate um, you know uh, effort that we're putting forth, and then uh, you know definitely move to that next point where uh, again they're starting to exchange, uh, they're using services, they're they're talking, they're you know fulfilling leads and things like that for sure. I know this is far out and I don't mean to be a killjoy, but, uh, you know, as a journalist, you kind of had to ask it. Um, usually when, when I would say black folks at large are thinking more in terms of disruption, which is a beautiful thing. How do you disrupt a system, whether that's social justice or, uh, you know, criminal justice or economics or po- politics? Like, let's break this and start over. Um, and this is an example of that. But usually traditional systems say, oh, OK, were well, you ready to disrupt? Well, we need to squelch that. Do you do you would you guys see especially this week when you think about what's happening in the stock market, for example, are you worried that such disruption will cause a quicker uh, reaction from the industry to say we need to we need to stop that because we don't want money circulating or moving that way? I I would say no. Um, I think right the problem the way I see it is we've never even seen, I, I think this may be one of those things that you look at the African-American home ownership rate, um, you know, and I would say for me, if nothing else comes out of this, people will start to see, hey, we have the power to disrupt things. Mm-hmm. And it, it can be, and we have the power to build infrastructure that is meant for our interests. Because at the end of the day, that's really what this is. So if it doesn't work the first time, don't think we're not coming back a second and third time. So so this is us building the infrastructure to empower ourselves. And, you know, listen, I I mean, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Uh, And so, you know, whether this is the first iteration or we come back on your show for the fourth or fifth iteration, this infrastructure is going to get built. This empowerment is going to get done. Um, You know, listen, Yes, I know. I have no doubts that we will meet challenges um, from places that we may not even think their challenges come. Um, obviously, you know, the power of the African American dollar is something that a lot of people pay attention to. Um, and so keeping it in our community um, has been a challenge. And so, you know, I, but I think all three of us are up to that challenge. And, and so, you know, Bring you a best shot. <laughs> do what we got to do. <laughs> um, again, excellent idea. The the the, the website hbcrealestate.com. You can visit, check it out, register as a as a partner and proprietor on the site. Each of you, please plug your social media so folks can follow you, uh, and we can keep up with the development of HBC Real Estate and all of your your individual joint ventures. Kristen, we will obviously start with you, sis. Appreciate it. Thank you, King. Um, so yes, I am the one building the website, all of that. That's what I do. So if you need platforms, um, logos, whatever that may be, even before this, I've done a few things for William. Um, please follow me, Janelle T Designs. Um, and that's pretty much everywhere. Janelle T Designs.com, Janelle T Designs on Instagram, um, Twitter. You can already obviously see some of my work for HBCRealEstate.com. So um, and I love helping black people. So let me help you. I got y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus. Yeah. So um, I think as mentioned, we're all serial entrepreneurs. So uh, I typically just send people straight to my, uh, my personal page where I link to all the things that I do. <laughs> so you can find me on Instagram or Twitter at Marcus King. Uh, the I is an X. So K X N G Marcus 
with a C, not a K. <laughs> and it obviously will. At HBCU money, I know, but anything else? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I look right. I mean, um, yeah, no, I mean, definitely make sure you follow us at HBCU Real Estate on Instagram. It's HBCU.realestate. Um, and, you know, for me, it's HBCU money. If you if you want to find the economics and finance conversation, and, uh, other than that, you can follow me personally at Astro Economist. Um, and so that's where I am. <laughs> 